Hey everybody, this is Kevin, and uh, welcome to my live stream. And I'm just going to give it a few moments until people start getting on before I get too involved, because then people are going to ask me, and then I'm going to have to repeat myself. But uh, just a quick little intro here. I posted a video last night. You may have seen yesterday morning, uh, I went flying and uh, had a little bit of an incident with my Yankee. So I decided uh, how I'm going to repair it and what little upgrades I want to do to it and decided just to do a live stream and share it with you guys. Maybe get some comments. Hey, Chuck. Hey, Chuck, I was looking at my uh, my StreamYards account, which is what I use to create the, the live stream broadcast. And the last one I did was on February 18th. <laughs> so was that over five months, what, five months and a couple weeks ago since I've done a live stream. So that just kind of... Uh, at put it in perspective, I'm like, man, I can't believe it's been that long. And, and anyway, since I've done that last live stream, I've uh, gotten a new phone. So hopefully it's a little clearer than you're used to seeing my lives. But uh, it's been, yeah, it has been a bit. So I got to kind of reacclimate myself to, you know, working with my hands here on my project. And then also I have a laptop computer over here on the side where I've got the, the chat going. I don't have the chat on my screen because it tends to... Oh, and you know what? Right as I say that, I noticed um, your chat came up on my screen. Although I don't think it's coming up on the broadcast. Are you seeing the chats on your screen? Like right here, scrolling up and down? Let me know if you are, because i got to kind of reconfigure that. You are seeing them? Okay. I'm not seeing them on my laptop, though. No, not on the side. Okay, just in the chat box, though, right? Like normal. Okay, I just I don't want the chat to kind of cover up, you know, the image on the screen. Okay, so that's good. All right. All right, I'm just kind of reconfiguring. I've never actually done a live stream on this phone, so the account or the settings are kind of all out of whack. Anywho, um, I guess we can go and get started. I'll give you a quick uh, synopsis on why we're... Uh... Oh, <laughs> thanks, Chuck. That was, that was literally, Chuck, believe it or not, that whole project, when the minute I cut the box open and unsealed the box until it was ready to fly was about two, two and a half hours. Um, and when I opened the box, that was not even my intention. I just opened it to look and see what the kit consisted of and, and learn more about it. And as I was looking at it, I started, the wheel started spinning in my head. I'm like, you know what? I think I can get this thing to fly on motors. So it, it was actually very quickly done the night before I flew it. So the, the paint was probably, or the glue was probably still wet when on that first launch. But, uh, hey, Ryan, how you been? Good to see you, bud. Um, yeah, so if you did see the video, this is the Yankee that I almost lost. And <laughs> it was kind of a miracle in the way I found it. But let me tell you what happened. So the way these motor, well, certain rockets have different mechanisms to hold the motors in. Let me just show you. This is a, a spent motor. You can see the nozzles burned out. It's a, a used motor. But this type of rocket, the Yankee, is a what's called a friction fit design. Now you look, I mean, that it is, it's almost like a hot knife through butter. It's pretty, pretty loose. So on uh, launch, of course, the, the thrust is going down. So it's pushing the rocket up, no problem. But when it gets to the top of, of the flight at Apogee, the front of the motor right here blows a charge forward, which is what pushes the parachute and everything out the nose, pops the nose cone off and everything. Well, with the motor set up like this, if it's not tight, and what they recommend doing is wrapping masking tape around the motor. Yeah, I know, I saw that, St. Louis Cardinals fan. Looking forward to having him on the team. Um, you wrap masking tape to make that really tight, and it's called friction fit. The friction of that, by forcing it down tight, is what holds the motor in. Well. I'm not having much luck with friction fit, and instead of blowing everything out forward, it's actually blowing the motor out the back. So the, the rocket's coming down with no motor in it, 
And these are very hard to find in the desert when, when it's a thousand feet away. And what the result of that is, is it blows the motor out instead of blowing out the chute. So in yesterday's flight, the reason I lost it, I was looking for a parachute up in the sky and the parachute never came out. And you probably saw the onboard video. It was just doing a nosedive. Now, it appeared that the nose cone did pop off because there's not a single scratch. That thing could not have come in ballistic as it was and not put a scratch on the nose cone. But the way if it hit like this, which I'm pretty sure it did, that explains the crinkled nose. You can see the body's kind of crinkled. So why am I telling you all that? Because I am now no longer a fan of friction fit motors. And Joe over at JC Hobbies, hopefully you all have seen his channel, he did a little video about a month ago on retrofitting existing rockets and new rockets that are designed for friction fit to utilize an engine hook. So what I'm gonna to try to do now is retrofit this to have a, a hook because if you guys remember, this is also the same rocket that I tried to hit the 2000 foot barrier with. And I was actually, this was the motor that I attempted it with. In fact, you can see the tape on it. So that that's kind of what was supposed to hold it in tight. And it's, it's tight, but it still blew out. If you remember, I lost the motor for a week or so. I, I finally did find it. So, now if you notice too, yesterday's flight, this is not the motor because I've lost it, but it was on a C65 motor. Now, a C motor will get that rocket up to a thousand feet. So if you double, if you go to the next letter up, you're doubling the power up to a D. Now the problem with Estes motors is, this is a C motor, this is a D motor. Now obviously, it's impossible to fit a D into a rocket design for an 18 millimeter. So you can't use Estes D power motor. So how do you get the, a D power into an 18 millimeter hole? Well, you use another company called Quest Aerotech and they make D motors in the same size as the C. So this has twice the power of this in the same package, which is incredible. So the only way to hit 2,000 feet with this is to put a D in it. So I've ordered some more Ds. In fact, here's a brand new D, unused, and it's ready to go. But as you can see, it just, it slips in like butter. And I don't want to wrap it with tape because I've proven once before on this one, that doesn't work. So I'm going to install an engine hook. Now let me pull another rocket down real quick and show you how the engine hook works. This is the generic E2X that I also flew yesterday. Set that guy aside. So this is a standard 18 millimeter, same size hole as the Yankee, except it utilizes this hook system. So let's say you, you take your, your motor here, you open up that little wedge, slide it in. Actually, let me, let me use the C. And then it gets locked in. That little hook catches it. So when it gets up to the apogee and ejects, if the motor's blown backward, that hook's gonna catch it, requiring all the force to go out the nose ejecting the chute. So that's the purpose for an engine hook. Most of you probably already knew that, but in case you didn't, now you do. So we're gonna eventually make the Yankee look like this. That's the goal of my video today. So how do we do that? Well, I'm gonna totally steal Joe's ideas on how he did it, how he retrofits his. And I'm gonna install this hook into the body, but just to kinda, of, well, for two reasons. Cosmetically, we wanna cover up that silver, but we also need a, an anchor point to hold it down while this can flex up. But if you don't anchor it, then the whole thing can just, just open up on you. So what I've decided to do is actually, instead of taking new body tube, I, I found some old relic pieces of my old bandits, which is the same size, uh, 18 millimeter, and it's already painted white for me and everything. So I'm gonna cut a piece of this tubing off and lay it over the hook. 
which will then hold the hook down while this flexes up and down. Hope that makes sense to you. So again, uh, not my idea. Full credit goes to Joe. And if you go to his channel, I'll put the link at the end after I upload this. But if you go to his channel, JC Hobbies, you'll, you'll see exactly his technique. And it's pretty ingenious. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get cutting and gluing. And the other thing I was going to do was fix the, the, fr the front of the body tube. But I'm kind of contemplating leaving it as is. Even though it's a little scrunched, it is smooth. The nose cone does come off. But if I cut that broken piece off, I'm short now I'm shortening the body tube and the overall length, and that actually will make the rocket more tail heavy by not having as much weight forward, which could make it unstable. And I want to keep the stability, especially with all that power that I'm going to be putting into it. So I think unless someone convinces me otherwise, I'm going to leave it as is, even though it looks a little ratty. Um, it's structurally fine, and I, I just can't believe that it didn't sustain any more damage than it did on that descent. So, all right, let's get to cutting. I'm going to use oh, a caliper. You may have seen me do this technique before. There's a little disc up inside the tube. It's a little washer, cardboard washer. It's called a thrust ring, and when you push the engine in, it hits it. It hits that ring. So it's going to be roughly right at the bottom of that red stripe in, on the inside. That's what you hear it hitting on the inside. We want to put this hook just on the bottom side of that ring. Okay. So how do we know where the ring is? Well, I'm going to take my caliper and push it up to that ring, and I'll get a distance on... Okay. Do that again. When it stops, I'll know I've hit it. Okay, so there it is. It's at that length right there, which is oh, about an eighth of an inch shy of that red stripe. So I'm going to make a mark. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about leaving it too. For now, maybe in the future, if this system works and it proves itself cosmetically, I can clean it up later. But right now, I just I want it to hit that 2,000. That's my goal. i got to get this rocket to 2,000 feet. Okay, so let me make a mark right, right there. That's where I need to cut. The other thing that uh, is different than what Joe's video speaks of is this, paint, this rocket is not painted. This is all monocoat. Uh, it's like a plastic paper that I wrapped around the cardboard, and I ironed it down with the model iron. So before I glue this on, I'm actually going to have to cut a piece of the monocoat off. Hey, Bipster, good to see you. Just passing through. That's, that's what life is all about. This, this world ain't my home. I'm just passing through. Anyway, <laughs> okay, so I need to cut a little notch right at that mark, about an eighth of an inch slot. Okay, I think we're good for that little hook to to go in. Well, not quite wide enough. Okay, there we go. So now the hook is in the body tube, but then you gotta ask yourself, like where my finger is, what's going to apply pressure at that point to allow this to flex up and down? Now, Joe, as he was actually using a Yankee, if I'm not mistaken, in his video, so a perfect example. And he measured an inch up from the bottom of the tube to the bottom of that where that little flap's going to need to be. So let me take this hook back out temporarily. I want to make a mark at the one inch line. These little numbers are not easy to see. Okay. Okay, so that's 
that's the bottom of the flap that I'm going to create. The, the flap is, I really, I don't want it to go any higher than the fins. I, I like to keep the top, so we're only going to be talking about three-fourths of an inch, maybe. Yeah, about three-fourths of an inch. Then I'm going to cut, where did I put it? Oh, out of this tube here. Okay, so let's go ahead and cut this to fit. Let me put these up before I damage them. And then also, if I get a chance, I may try to uh, show you guys some issues with my uh, altimeter, which you kind of see lurking there in the background. I'll play with that, and I'll show you how, how I use that for my flights. It might be kind of interesting to see. Okay. Now I'm going to just do a rough cut here, just kind of crude, just to get it open. See, that's why you don't throw anything away, ever, 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 <laughs> including old busted body parts from old rockets. Okay, let me get a, a rough estimate on how wide this cut needs to be. It needs, I'm going to set it inside the, the, distant, the width of the fillets. So let's see. Bottom of the fillet to the bottom of a fillet. Oh, I just saw Faith went live. Chuck, do me a favor. If you jump in there, just tell them I'm, I'm doing a live stream. And uh, hopefully they'll stay on long enough so I can jump in when I'm done. Okay, so now let me cut. Okay, so there's our, our wedge piece. That's going to be the piece that's going to, okay, right to that point there. Okay, let me take a swig of water. I got so many lights on around me that I'm sweating almost. I hope you guys enjoy this. I, I'm enjoying it. Kind of fun building and working on things in, in front of you guys. Puts the pressure on me to, to do a better job. Hey, Sportsline, how you been? I'm doing very well, thank you. I, uh... Doing a different type of live stream today. In fact, I was talking to Chuck earlier. I looked at my calendar on my StreamYards account, and my last live stream, Sportsline, was on February 18th, which is a little over five months ago. I cannot believe I've, it's been that long. But uh, anyway, here we are, and uh, I'm fixing a rocket. I don't know if Sportsline, if you saw my video that I posted last night, but I, I crashed this rocket, and uh, I'm repairing it, and I'm retrofitting it to hopefully prevent future accidents. I'm uh, installing this engine hook on it to help pull the motors in because my motors are just kind of free there and you got to wrap them with tape to make them tight and make a, it's called a friction fit and they keep blowing out. But if I put too much tape on it to make it tight, it's too tight to actually push in. So kind of a catch-22 there. So I'm installing an engine hook to help pull my motors in because my goal is I got to get this rocket over 2,000 feet. And to do that, I'm gonna need a, a big motor, and I gotta keep have a way to keep this motor in. <laughs> so, yeah. So, okay. Back to. I need to cut this piece now. It's gonna be at that line. Faith, what are you doing in here, Faith? I thought you were live. I guess you can do, you can multitask better than I can. So good for you on that. Aaron, I know you, you don't have any rockets in your house, <clears throat> but this is a rocket. <laughs> uh, we got to get your alpha built, man. Long overdue. So let me just kind of make a preliminary line here where I want to make this cut. Okay. 
Okay, so there's that's going to be the little flap. <laughs> we we can well build a rocket with you. That would be yeah, we if we could maybe do a stream yard like a dual thing. And I actually have Aaron an unbuilt Alpha 3 that I'd be willing to build alongside you. I mean, if you wanted to build the same rocket simultaneously, I would be all for that. If that's what it takes to get you to <laughs> open up that box and start working on it, I will more than gladly do that. Um, I want to trace, and I can clean this off with rubbing alcohol later, but I just want to draw some lines so I'll know how far to cut. Now remember, this is white is not paint, it's monocoat. So I'm going to um, it will get done just to get motivated. Yeah, we gotta motivate you. That's what we're here for. So this is actually hopefully it's not stuck too too well to the cardboard, but I should just be able to cut this out with my knife and peel it off. If it's that easy, then life is great. If not, then I'm gonna have to do a little sanding. But that, that shouldn't be too difficult. So I'm going to cut just on the inside of this line so there's a little bit of overlap. So let me... Okay. And, I mean, it'd be nice if they were perfectly straight, but they don't have to be because it's going to be covered up. with the piece I'm gluing on. Okay, let's see how well this peels off. Not too bad, actually. All right. So there you go. See, that's monocoat. It's just like plastic paper. And, uh, cool. Let me, uh, grab a paper towel and some rubbing alcohol. And I'm just going to clean off that ink. See, rubbing alcohol can clean a myriad of things. Now there's a there is a faint little bit of the line, which actually I'm happy about because that'll tell me how far to put that tab when I glue it down. Now, while the the cardboard is exposed, this is a good opportunity to just kind of roughen it up a little bit so it accepts the glue better. Now, before I glue that little tab down, let me get some masking tape and I'm gonna cut some strips out. Hey, we're up to six. I appreciate you guys jumping in. Friday night of all nights, party night, you all decided to, to watch me fix a rocket. Not really repair, because I've decided I'm not gonna do any repairs on the nose, um, for now anyway, but I am retrofitting this to have an engine hook. So let me cut some thin strips. I have them on standby. Okay. First order of business is to glue the hook in. So I'm gonna use a little bit of wood glue. If you guys ever eat Pringles, always save your lids. Pringle lids are the best for glue because glue peels right off. This is relatively clean and I've probably mixed up a hundred um, projects of like epoxy and other types of glue, so always save your plastic lids. Okay. So I'm gonna put a little bit of glue right on that slot Again, stealing this from Joe, because it'll seal the hole once the, the hook is in. 
so uh, ejection charge can't blow blow by. Okay, so that lays in there nicely. Okay, I know. Now apply some glue to the underside. Even though this glue won't work particularly well on the metal, at least it'll just kind of help hold it in place. Okay, I'm gonna take a little piece of tape to hold the hook straight. So let me get it. I'm just gonna eyeball this. Okay, and I'm just going to hold that down. That way it won't shift around on me. Okay. Okay, now I'll spread this glue. Okay, I'm going to take my little flap which is the same diameter as the body tube, so it's got the right curvature built into it. And if I put too much glue on it, that's okay, because it's gonna ooze out anyway, and then, then at least that way I know for sure that I got full coverage. Okay. Okay, I can still kind of see my line there, so I'm just gonna lay this down on the line. So in a nutshell, that's gonna be what it, the final product's gonna look like, but I'm gonna tape it down See, when I push down, glue kind of oozes out, which is good. We want that. Okay. Where did I put those strips of tape here? There. Okay. Okay, press it down. as tight as I can make it. See, there's a little bit of a lift on it because the engine hook is, is lifting it off the tube. So. there. Okay, now the hardest part of rocket building or modeling in general is I've got to let that glue dry and probably not going to happen on this stream. I'm going to let this sit overnight and then tomorrow I'm going to clean up around the edges and I'm probably going to lay down a, a little fillet with more glue just to kind of smooth it out. No, Chuck, uh, believe it or not, a lot of uh, the the very, very basic Estes kits don't even come with hooks. The Viking doesn't come with one. The Yankee doesn't come with one. Uh, well, as soon as I say that, I think that those might be the only two. <laughs> um, some of the smaller ones don't. Um, and the Yankee just happens to be one of them. I Initially, I always build per instructions. And I don't modify them unless... There, I know of a reason to, and I never even thought about modifying this until I saw Joe's video. I'm sending you our rocket to build, then we can... <laughs> okay, I mean, I'll, I'll gladly build it. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get it built for you. But no, I think you ought to do it, because you'd learn so much more by doing it yourself. So again, the hard part is now just letting that dry. But... Uh... 
I'm, I'm, I'm tempted to slide a motor in there just to verify it works, but uh, I'm going to leave well enough alone and just trust that I, you know, it will. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside. Uh, now I'm going to get kind of geeky. How, uh, Aaron, how are you following me if you're doing a live stream? I, I'm, I'm perplexed. Let me set that aside. Otherwise, I will no doubt get something in the glue. All right. I want to show you guys how my altimeters work. I've got two remaining altimeters. This is the same altimeter in a pouch, and very carefully. So obviously this one is still working. This is the one that was in the Yankee when it flew the other day, or yesterday, and it's no longer working. And I just don't know, you know, I, I just don't know why. Everything seems fine. But let me show you how the altimeters work, and you get the app on your phone. Okay, it's called the Flight Sketch. That's the company that makes it. And once you power this up, it'll link by Bluetooth to your, your app on your phone. Let me, uh, how can I set this up so you can see it? I'll use my alcohol bottle. Okay, right now it says no devices found. But I'm gonna power it up. And again, this is not working right now. Let me show you the one that does work, actually. And you'll notice they all have tethers with hooks because this if this is not hooked to your rocket, this will go flying and you'll never find this again. Jess, hello, Jess has her phone watching you and her work phone. Do oh, okay, I got you. So I'm curious how much of my video stream is becoming part of yours. So as you can see, it's the same same altimeter. I uh, already got that battery built in. There's a little switch right there. So you take your thumbnail and you turn it on until you see a, a green light. Okay, see the green light? Okay, now it's on. <laughs> Most of it, great. So it's like a, I'm doing a dual, dual live stream. Okay, so now that it's on, we'll just tuck it away. Now, let me refresh this and it should find it. Aha, it found it. It found altimeter 418772495. That's just the particular ID number for this altimeter. I'm gonna to connect to it. Okay, the altimeter and the phone are now speaking to one another. Um, it's got a, a Bluetooth signal of 61 decibels, I don't know, whatever. The onboard battery here is, the voltage is fluctuating. And it's giving a sep the sensor in here is 81.2 feet. Now, if you guys have seen my rocket videos, I hold this up after each flight and show you what the max altitude was, which is also known as the apogee. Current altitude is set is also at zero right now. I'm going to arm it for launch, and I'm going to do a simulated launch, and I'm going to show you how the numbers climb. After I arm it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cup it in my hand. I got to do this off camera. I'm going to cup it in my hand, and I'm going to literally suck the air out of that pocket which is gonna reduce the air pressure around the altimeter. And when I do that, you're gonna see that number climb. I'm not, let me see. Okay, no, let's see. Let me prop this up with something. With less glare. Oh, I know. I'll get my little phone holder. There we go. Okay, so you can see the maximum altitude there eh, is zero because it's not armed yet. Okay, I'm going to arm it for launch. It says confirm because once you confirm it, you're, it's going to clear all the data that's already on here from the last flight. So it's going to erase the last flight and then arm it for a new flight. So clear an arm. Here at the bottom, it says ready to launch. And you'll see the current altitude is fluctuating because, you know, the atmosphere around the altimeter is now moving. So again, I'm going to cut my hands over it, and I'm going to suck. Ah, stay put. Okay, I'm going to suck the air pressure out, and just watch that 
maximum altitude climb, okay? Here we go. Lifting off. All right. I, I got it to a little over 2,000 feet. So actually, that's, that's going to mimic what I hope to do when I fly the Yankee, hit over 2,000 feet. And then after the flight, when you retrieve the rocket, you hit download. And you see the percentage going. When it gets to 100, I'll show you the graphs. This is the coolest little app, this whole little setup. I love this thing. Okay. Recording. Okay, the data's up. Now you can see on a chart our simulated flight. It went up, went up to 2,200 feet. Now it shows no vertical velocity. Notice the red line is straight because this has accelerometers in it too. So it can sense movement. So it did not have any velocity whatsoever. And then, oops, and then acceleration. Again, uh, it stayed at 1G the whole time. It didn't experience any G-forces because it wasn't actually lifting off. And then it gives you all sorts of, you know, it gives you your speed if there is any, your descent rate, time to burnout, time to apogee, total time of flight, and then you can uh, give the flight a title, descrip description. Then you can save it to your local storage and then upload it to your online account. It is the coolest little app. So I'm not going to save it or upload it. In fact, I'm going to uh, just leave it alone. In fact, I'm going to turn it off because I don't want to waste the battery. Turn off, power off. Okay, you can remotely turn this off, which is what I just did. All right. Now the problem I'm having with this altimeter now is it's communicating. It's just not... Let me go back, and we shouldn't have any... It's scanning. Yeah, see, I can't find it because this isn't powered on. Okay, I'm going to insert the battery, and it, it may turn on. When, well, it will turn on when I put the battery in. See, the green light came on. Okay, it's off. So now if I refresh this, it found it. This is altimeter 113-900-8329. I'm going to connect to it. Okay. It's a reading. I'm showing voltage of 2.8. Uh, signal strength is roughly 30, 35, high 30s. Okay. Now it's not showing any altitudes because we're not armed for launch. So I'm going to do the same process. I'm going to arm it. Clear an arm. And you notice the altitude is not dancing around. In fact, it's not doing anything. I'll, I'll do the little cup test here. Look at our sensor temperature just jumped to minus 188 degrees. I mean, that's ridiculous. Um, oh, look, I just did a suction test, and it jumped up to 29,000 feet. See how sporadic that is? I mean, now you, we're up in airline territory, and I didn't, it's, I didn't uh, breathe on it hardly half as much as I did the other one. Um, let me clear it and arm for another simulated launch. Okay, it's zero. See, I, I can't fly when I'm getting 19,000 feet readings. So I, I don't know if the barometer on here is... I'm not sure if I can point it out to you or not. There's the, the barometer is actually, from what I understand, that little silver square right there. That's... That's the unit that reads the air pressure. So how you fix it, I don't know. Look, right now it's showing that it's currently at 12,000 feet. As it sits right now, I've climbed 12,000 feet. That's not the maximum altitude. That's where it currently is sitting. Oh, now, now look, now I'm back to zero again. Um, totally inconsistent. I can't fly with this anymore, I, and I don't know how to fix it. So I'm frustrated. So if any of you are out there and you are electronic gurus and know about circuit boards and barometric pressure gauges, feel free to let me know. And I'm sure you're all asking, why don't you contact the company? I have, and they don't respond anymore. They don't sell these anymore. So they're becoming um, antique items that are just – I just took the battery out, by the way. They're, they're unreplaceable. 
uh, so I'm, I'm kind of in a funk. And I know a lot of other rocket modelers are in the same predicament. These flight sketch minis, when they work, they're phenomenal. There's the website, by the way, if you ever want to go and check out their their website. They got some cool stuff. Not just this, but uh, their whole website's pretty cool. But when it comes to the minis, they are not responding. The thing I like about the mini, let me show you how, let me turn this off. Let me just make sure that it's not connected to any device. Scanning. Nope, so they're, they're all turned off, which is good. Okay. The reason I like the minis is because they fit in my small rockets. And you probably see in all my builds how I cut the the opening of my nose cones. They always come sealed. And to me, that's like a lot of dead space. Why not utilize it? So I take my altimeters and I slide them up into the nose cone. Now the Yankee is a little bit different because it's conical shape. It can't go in quite as deep as like a more of a oval is shaped. Um, in fact, let me pull one of those down and show you. The Yankee is kind of a bad example. Well, now this is actually the other extreme. This is my generic E2X. This one, it's almost too big. It actually flops around in there. So in cases like this, what I'll do is I'll take a piece of foam or maybe just a, a wadded up piece of spent masking tape just to kind of jam it in there to keep it from rattling around too much and also from, keep it from falling down into the tube, which may affect the parachute deployment. So I, I love having my altimeters up in the nose cone. And that actually adds a little more nose weight, which makes them fly a little more stable as well. So it's like a win-win. And I will show you, well, actually I can use this as an example. I got, recently I got two new altimeters. This is an SS altimeter that comes from SS and it's kind of a round case, but uh, all this does is show the apogee. It doesn't have any accelerometers in it, no velocities, no G-force, no timers, nothing. All it does is read the barometric pressure of your of your apogee. Um, the problem with this is it's just, it's actually the exact same diameter as the body tube and it just, it's gonna get stuck. So another little trick that Joe shared, shared with me is you open it up, take it apart, and this is what you got. This is the inside of the altimeter. Oh, no, uh, they're all, assuming you don't crash, Aaron, they're all reusable. Uh, I've probably had a dozen flights on my Yankee. That's why I'm repairing it, so I can uh, get some more flights here soon. Um, I've only got two flights. This is the brand new rocket. I've only got two flights on this one. But no, your Alpha, in fact, I flew my Alpha yesterday. If you, if you, don't, if you haven't seen the video, check it out. I flew my Alpha yesterday for probably the 10th plus time. Um, so no, they're they're definitely designed to con uh, to last. Uh, but when you take the altimeter out of the rocket, it suddenly becomes a lot sleeker. But then the problem is, what do you do with the battery? So I soldered these wires I just got on my own. I just kind of soldered the wires to where the battery contacts were up to the battery, and I wrapped the battery in uh, heat shrink. So this now will fit pretty easily in the Yankee tube. Um, obviously it's on the long side, so putting it in the nose cone, not much of a benefit there. Um, the problem is this, the length of it, it takes up a lot of real estate. And, you know, when you look at a rocket and you say, let me put the, um, you know, I said Aaron, but this might be Jess I'm talking to. So Jess, if I call you Aaron, Please forgive me. Uh, when you guys got married, you became one flesh. So Aaron is Jess, and Jess is Aaron anyway. So there. <laughs> Doesn't matter what I call you, you're the same person. Um, so the motor, you got to keep in mind, the motor is going to take up this much of your body tube, right, on the inside. And then you have to put, it's called wadding. I think you, you guys got some, Aaron. Um, okay, gotcha, Jess. That package of wadding you got, it's basically like tissue paper, but it's fireproof. 
and you jam the wadding in, and that's going to take up a good inch or two right here. And what that does is when this blows it forward to eject the, the parachute, it's basically a fireball. And if you don't have that wadding in there, it's going to catch your parachute on fire. So you got to have that wadding in there to prevent any damage to your chute. So figure your motor's there, a couple inches of wadding, then your parachute. You're up to you know an inch left, and you still have to have room for the, the rubber cord, your shock cord, all the, the the cables that, you know, your parachute has cables too, the shroud lines. So where are you going to put this? You know, see, see what I mean about real estate being prime? It, it's not easy. So you can fly a skinny rocket like this with an altimeter like that if it's much longer. But for these short guys, it's tricky. With my generic E2X, I mean, look, this whole thing actually will slip down in there with no problem. So not an issue. But these itty bitty nose cones and short body tubes, it's difficult. So there you have it. Now, there are other altimeters. This is called a Jolly, it's kind of a silly name, but the name is called Jolly Logic. It's the company that makes it. It's it's more squarish than the Estes. Similar size, but it's not rounded corners. It's anyway, this doesn't fit either. And if you get a protective pouch for it, which I highly recommend, now you're looking at a pretty chunky little altimeter. That there's no way it's going to fit. And you definitely don't want to try to jam this into a tube because if it's tight going in, it's going to be tight coming out, which means it may not come out which means your parachute's not going to come out, which means this thing's going to crash. So you definitely want to use the pouch on something substantially bigger if you're going to utilize that. So that's uh, my Altimeter 101 class for y'all. Um, I wish I could do more with this. I just, I, I got to let that glue dry. And, you know, the impatient side of me says, it's dry, rip it off, let's check it out. But no. I got to be strong, resist the urge to to start playing with it. So I'm going to let that dry overnight. Again, the nose cone, you can see it did get damaged on the crash when it came down. I had thought about utilizing my little uh, cutoff tube here. Here, I can show you kind of how this works. It's a cutting guide. You open it up. And well, I, I, I don't want to do it because it's scrunched up. If it weren't so scrunched and have wrinkles, this part would slide onto the tube. And then see how it's kind of separated into little sections. Then you slide this part on it. And as it tightens down, it, it collapses those little teeth onto the body tube. So it's solid. And then you take your knife and you just cut along this and it makes a perfect cut to cut the end off that tube but now like I said I could do that but um, then I'll be shortening the tube by a little bit which makes it less nose heavy which makes a little less stable hey Don good to see you bud Th thanks for jumping in I'm not sure if you got my text earlier or not but uh we're, we're kind of just kind of wrapping up, but I'm kind of doing a little 101 class here. But check it out, Donald. I got an engine hook glued in to my Yankee because I have a D16 ready to go. I want to hit 2,000 feet with it, but I need an engine hook because these things keep blasting out, and I, I'm friction fit wrapping them with tape just is not holding, so... Yeah, so now you you understand. In fact, it's a it's kind of a miracle that I even found this. I, let me share the story. I, I told Donald in my comments, but I almost didn't find this rocket. I probably searched for about thirty minutes looking for the uh, the Yankee. And as I was actually walking back to my van, a quail, like a little bird, just kind of like like scurried in, across the path in front of me. 
And I stopped and I watched it and it kind of lifted off a little bit, took off a couple of feet in the air and it made a left turn and landed in a wash to my left. And I had just been praying to God, God, please, if there's any way I can find this rocket, please point me in the right direction because I got to get the altimeter and I got, I got to get the camera that was on it. I got to retrieve these things. So um, the rocket, you know, it's the, the rocket's the cheap part. It's the electronics you put on them and in them that make it pricey. If you want, you don't have to do all that like I do. But um, so anyway, this bird flew and it kind of made a left turn into this wash and it landed. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to follow it just for fun. I, I got down into that wash and I made a left turn and the bird disappeared. I don't know what happened to the bird. But I just started walking that wash up and I came up a little little uh, ridge and lo and behold, like 20 feet ahead of me, there lays the Yankee. And I don't believe in coincidence. Some people are like, ah, oh, it's just coincidence. I don't believe it was. But uh, I think that's just kind of a cool little experience I had. That uh, the Lord was leading the way. And don't worry, Donald, that tape is just holding the hook. And I got a little piece of a body tube over the hook, keeping it in place. Donald, I agree with you 100%. I've looked at the egg timers, and they've got those little mini GPS units. Um, I did, you know, when I flew it the last time, in fact, this is the motor I flew it with, and you can tell, see the tape on it that it was a friction fit. It still blew out. Um, I found the motor later, like a week later. But I, I never lost sight of it, believe it or not. I thought about if this, if this can dry up overnight, I was going to go fly tomorrow morning. But it's completely overcast tomorrow morning, and I, I don't want to risk flying this in the clouds. I want to wait till it's a clear, sunny day, so I'll be able to track the, the tracking smoke and find it. But no, I, I was able to uh, track it all the way up, and I believe I hit 2,000 feet. I just can't prove it because the altimeter failed to work on me. But, uh, so, anyway. And, this, man, I, I, I got a new Yankee in, in a bag that I want to build and make pristine. This thing has just been beaten up pretty pretty badly. It's... It's already been rebuilt once. I don't know if you can see it. Right there, there's a little seam line. This whole front of the tube has been rebuilt already once before, and I had to recover it with new monocoat. Um, I just, I've already got a little coupler in there. I don't want to have to mess with... Actually, you know what? No, I don't think I put a coupler in this one. I just butt glued the two ends together. Yes, this is definitely Old Faithful Chuck. <laughs> so, uh, Donald, if you don't know Chuck, Chuck's in here. Chuck's a very good friend of mine as well. He lives back east, but uh, he used to do rockets back as a kid. And uh, I'm trying to get him interested in it again. In fact, I think Chuck's got a Yankee kit, if I'm not mistaken. <clears throat> wink, wink, hint, hint. So, yeah, Chuck, you got to get that Yankee built. And uh, and also, I was talking to well, Jess made the comment earlier. Maybe we can do a Streamyards uh, dual ca camera thing, kind of like when we did that that Munchie Box video with them. If we could uh, maybe do a side by side and help build their Alpha Three, uh, Donald. Um, if you scroll up, you'll see a, a comment or Faith Family and Sports. They're good friends of mine. They live in Kentucky and. They have an Alpha 3 that they're kind of in a funk with, that it's not being built, and they, they want to build it. They just don't know how. So I want to help them out. I've got a, a Yankee also that uh, maybe I could build alongside of them. <laughs> Moral support, Jess. Moral support. If, if, if not anything else, you can be that. I mean, I don't mean get in the background with some pom-poms and jump up and down, but, you know, encourage them. <clears throat> Actually, I hadn't thought about this till now. Maybe Google your area and rocket clubs and see if there's any rocket clubs in your area and go out and, and experience a launch and talk to the people out there and get some advice and hints. That's right. Uh, Donald did an Alpha 3 build, as did I. The only thing, Donald, and maybe you'll agree with me, is you and I built them a little more intricately than like a beginner. Um, I, I'm afraid that if they see my Alpha 3 build, it'll overwhelm them because I went really deep into modifications. 
and I didn't do it very simply. So if anything, I might want to redo that video and upload a, a simpler built one for, for beginners. But definitely, uh, just if you hear me say Jess and Aaron Donald, I'm talking to Faith, Family, and Sports. Uh, Jess, if you go to Donald's channel as well, um, he does have an Alpha 3 build. Uh, he's got some other builds in there too, so you can kind of get a feel for how these go together. Yeah, it can be overwhelming just because all the little itty bitty parts that have to be just perfect, which you'll notice over time, they don't have to be exactly perfect. That's one thing I, I used to think that. But if something's off by a sixteenth of an inch or eighth of an inch, it's still gonna fly. It's still gonna fly. So <clears throat> we're actually coming up on, I'm gonna hit the hour mark and then I'm gonna sign off and Jess, are you guys going to be on for a little while longer? If so, I'd love to jump over and, and jump into your stream. So let me know if you guys are going to be on for a little while longer. And I'll cut this off in a few minutes once I hit the hour mark and then head over to your channel. Um, Donald, any updates on the uh, Challenger 1? Curious how that's coming along. And also, uh, Joe, if... Joe from JC Hobbies is going to watch this on replay. He's not unable to make the live tonight, but uh, I'll put the link to his channel at the bottom as well at the end, him and Donald's channel. Because if you guys are at all interested in rockets, something you're already doing or something you're contemplating doing, I encourage you to visit as many other Rocketeer channels as possible because there's no one right way to do anything. There's a lot of wrong ways of doing things, but there's no one right way. So get a feel for how other people do things. My way is not the gospel truth way of doing things. It's just my way of doing it. So get a feel for how other people build and uh, set up and, and do their, you know. I'm not going to, like I did a video the other day on how to fold parachutes. I'm not going to say that that's the only way to do it. I'm just saying that's the way I do it. Um, so it's okay, Donald. Yeah, just come. You can watch the replay later on. Okay, good. Yeah, I'm I, I'm anxious to. I want to get more involved in 3D printing. I really do. I I think once you get that, the net, the. I don't know the skill of it down pad and knowing how to upload files and creating things. Man, the the possibilities are literally endless, and then you can start building up your own fin cans, um, nose cones. I mean, then you talk about retro rockets, Don. You could you could rebuild anything, literally anything at that point. So, who knows? Maybe uh, there's a 3D printer out in the world with my name on it. It just doesn't know it yet. Oh, a 3D printer? The Puny Pipe Man. Well, thanks for jumping in here. I don't believe I know you, but uh, I appreciate you jumping in and, and saying hi. And uh, the nice comments. I appreciate that. Yeah, three, uh, 3D printing. That's That's got to be the wave of the future. And you know, I was thinking about this the other day. I was at a hobby shop, and they deal primarily with RC cars. But there was a shelf behind the counter. There must have been ten gazillion little baggies of plastic car parts for RC cars. And I'm thinking every one of those pieces can be, I don't know, sized up, measured, dimensionized, whatever, you, however you call it, and then produced on a 3D printer. Which, in a way isn't good for those companies because they go out of business if people make their own parts. But you can start making your own parts to fix things. How cool would that be? So, hey, Mud Dog, thanks for jumping in. Donald Blomdahl, greetings. Question mark? <laughs> I think that's a good thing. Um, crossover, param crossover Paranormal Society. Hey, I, I don't know you personally, but I've seen you in Donald's channel, so good to see you. Oh, thanks, Puny Pipe Man. Um... You know, that's interesting. You know, people don't know who their subscribers are unless they introduce themselves like you are now. So it's good to meet you. Thanks for jumping in. I'll have to check out your channel. Not sure if you do videos, or, but uh, see what you're all about. And uh, I'm going to end. Guys, we just hit the hour mark, so I'm going to conclude this live stream. If, you, if you're at all interested in seeing what we did down here on the, uh, the bottom end of the Yankee on the retro fit here, uh, go back and watch the beginning of the stream and you'll see what I actually did to it. But, uh, 
Oh, you're Jonathan Myers. Oh, okay. Let's see, now it all makes sense. The stars are aligning. I didn't know I didn't know that. Uh Donald, I'm it's coming along. I've got all the parts in now, and I am literally waiting for paint to dry. Literally, I, I spray painted the uh I want to give another day or two on the legs, and then I'm gonna start detail painting them different colors on the, the landing pads and other parts. But and I've also got two of the body tube sections glued together also. So it's coming along nicely. Yep. That that build video is gonna be quite intense, actually. <laughs> Waiting for the cards to be pulled out. It would be a Fairfield Friday. Yeah. Don't have any cards in the near vicinity. Um, but I'm going to actually end the stream, and I'm going to run over to Faith, Family, and Sports. Donald, do me a favor. Um, now that you are informally, formally friends <laughs> with uh, Faith, Family, and Sports, uh, please um, go to their channel, and they're doing a live stream concurrently. So I'm going to end the stream and jump into theirs. Uh, Donald, please uh, subscribe to them and uh, hang out with us. They, they're doing this 100-day challenge where they do a live stream every day for 100 days. And you'll get to know the whole family. You'll, you'll get to meet Jess and Aaron and the kids and the whole gang. And again, not only are they a family, but we are all part of the family as well. So please, Donald, I'm going to end the stream now in a, in a second here. And let's all jump over there and, and kind of do a raid and inundate Aaron and Jess with all these people in their chat. So, guys, thanks for jumping in and, and spending some time with me as I fix my Yankee. Uh, hopefully you learned something. If not, well, then you probably already knew about it. <laughs> so with that, guys, have a great day. I'm going to do more of these live streams. I This was fun. I, I haven't done one in a while. So I'm going to do some more in the near future. So thanks for watching, guys. God bless all of you, and we will see you later. Again, go to Aaron's channel, Faith, Family, and Sports, and we'll see you over there. Take care, guys. God bless. Bye-bye.